Hello, everyone. This is Pauline from Healthy Spicy, and I am a latex allergy, mast cell activation syndrome, chronic illness, medical gaslighting patient advocate, because all of those are issues that I deal with. My daughter and I also have POTS and EDS um, issues too. Uh, but today we're going to focus specifically on latex allergy, and I am going to read to you um, the latex allergy information sheet from the Allergy and Asthma Network because I believe it is essential information uh, for everybody uh, who lives with and or knows other people with latex allergy because it's a life-altering allergy, okay? Uh, let's see. Let me make sure I'm going to, I'm sharing the screen. All right. There we go. Okay. So this is the latex allergy information sheet. Um, there's a lot here. So, um, and we can discuss later, um, things like latex allergy testing and how that's controversial. Uh, but right now, what is latex allergy? Latex allergy is an allergic reaction to the proteins present in the milky sap of the Hevea brasiliensis rubber tree. Latex allergy is also known as natural rubber latex allergy. There are other plants that also contain latex. Those can be separate videos. Latex allergy gener generally develops after repeated exposure to medical and consumer products containing natural rubber latex. Allergy to latex may pose a serious health risk to healthcare workers, spina bifida patients, workers with occupational exposure, patients with multiple surgeries. Other high-risk communities include people who wear CGM, continuous glucose monitors, people with asthma, people with other food allergies, in particular, people who are allergic to anything on the latex fruit allergy list. And if you're allergic to any of the top four uh, cross allergens for latex on the latex fruit syndrome list, then there's a very high probability you may have latex allergy. So you definitely need to talk to your doctor. How common is latex allergy? While latex allergy is rare, affecting 1% to 6% of the general population, that's still a lot of people, it is much more common in employees who work in the medical or dental field. I know people, I know two former dental techs who had to retire from their profession because they became allergic to latex because of it. In fact, 10 to 17% of healthcare workers and 33.8% of dental care workers have been diagnosed with latex allergy. In addition, 17% of restaurant workers have been diagnosed with latex allergy. Want to know why? Gloves. Um, a lot of states have banned gloves, uh, latex gloves, but I have seen videos in the last six months of doctors talking about, you know, latex allergy, latex gloves in the surgery room in the OR, in like this year. So um, if you're not allergic to latex and it's not in your medical file, they're not going to use the latex free stuff on you. That includes catheter tips, that includes IV bag, IVs, that includes um, everything, everything. And double check it anyway, even if they know, all right? So, People who undergo multiple, multiple surgeries, such as spina bifida patients, are also at increased risk for latex allergy. I'm going to have to see if I can get my friend Laurita um, on for a, an interview. She is a spina bifida patient with latex allergy, and she has her own uh, nonprofit uh, that I will also link in the description box. What are the different types of latex allergy? There are three types of reactions to natural, natural rubber products. IgE-mediated allergic reactions, type 1. Allergic contact dermatitis, type 4. 
and irritant contact dermatitis. I started at the bottom with irritant contact dermatitis. If I was wearing a rubber glove, if I was wearing, like tap the screen, um, if I was wearing rubber gloves, if I, uh, if I was wearing a, a bracelet or a, a cheap watch made of actual rubber, uh, I would just get a reaction to that. And um, that was it. And as the years progressed, it got worse because I was continuously exposed and I did not know to limit my exposure in order to help prevent the increase of severity of the allergy. Because here's the thing, you do not know if your first reaction or if your second reaction is going to be the same or worse than your first. You could literally go from a rash from a Band-Aid on reaction number one to a ride in the Wee Woo van and um, anaphylactic shock in a second. You don't know. You, then there's no way to, to, to predict that. So what is IgE-mediated allergic reaction to latex? An IgE-mediated allergic to latex can be life-threatening. IgE-mediated reactions are serious and what people are most concerned about preventing. That's where I'm at. And I might have been able to prevent it if doctors had known better when I asked them 16 years ago if I needed to alter anything other than just not using the products that I took in with it, that they skin tested me for. That's why I found out I was allergic to ethylenediamine dihydrochloride, which is a stabilizer in natural latex. So I'm also allergic to acrylics and a bunch of other things. So the next video I do, not tonight, is going to be on ethylenediamine dichloride because th that makes me allergic basically to the poison and the cure. Not kidding. Um, so IgE-mediated reactions are serious and what people are most concerned about, the reaction is caused by an allergic, and, allergic antibody, IgE directed against retained proteins and latex products. This reaction is triggered by direct skin contact, mucosal surface contact, such as eyes, nose, mouth, et cetera, and inhaling latex particles. Inhaling latex particles. Latex is airborne all the time. It just depends on if you're allergic to the specific latex particles in the air uh, or latex cross-reactives. I can walk into a grocery store or into a room after someone's sliced a melon or eaten a melon. I have a friend allergic to latex and severely allergic to melons if she even eats off of a food off of a plate that also preps um fruit bowls and sliced melons in the same kitchen she's gonna go on anaphylaxis so yeah cross reactions are real all right, let's see. Let's go down here. Cell-mediated contact dermatitis type 4. One second. Cell-mediated contact dermatitis is an allergic contact dermatitis for latex allergy. A type 4 cell-mediated reaction is not life-threatening, but it is still a major concern, especially because latex allergy is progressive, okay? Every exposure can increase the severity of the allergy if people already have it and can trigger it in those who do not, okay? A cell-mediated reaction is usually limited to the skin where contact occurs with rubber products. The rubber products contain numerous chemicals used in production that can cause a reaction in some people. This type of contact dermatitis is a delayed type immune reaction. Symptoms may take 24 to 48 hours to develop from the time of the exposure to reaction. Symptoms of type 4 allergic contact dermatitis reactions are confined to the skin. And those symptoms can include a red rash, papules, an elevation in the skin that is solid and can be colored. Many papules appear together as a rash. 
vesiculation, a blister type rash, and oozing. That was the entire first year for me after Eliana was born. I was hospitalized three times for severe mastitis. And um, I had latex 24-7, uh, uh, basically, um, for a week, every other week for her first three weeks of life. Um, six weeks of life. Um, I was just exposed to latex left and right. All right. If someone is repeatedly exposed with a tape for reaction, the rash may develop into a chronic problem and may even extend beyond the site of the contact. Yes, that happened to me. People can have both a delayed contact allergy to chemicals and latex along with an IgE-mediated contact latex allergy. Okay? Last one is irritant contact dermatitis. Individuals who use rubber, rubber products frequently, for example, healthcare workers who wear gloves, may develop irritant contact dermatitis. This dermatitis is different from allergic contact dermatitis. It is not mediated by an immune, by an immune sensitization and reaction. Rather, it is caused by frequent skin washing, sweating, and irritation from powder lubricants. Uh, corn starch is typically used for uh, separating, making sure that gloves and balloons don't stick to each other in the packaging. And that's what the latex attaches itself. And that's what makes it airborne. Um, and the molecules are small enough to get in through, through masks. So a mask can maybe help alleviate and prevent an allergy from a uh, roller reaction from being as bad as it would without possibly, uh, but it's not going to stop it from, uh, 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 it's not going to stop it. It's not like an iron shield. All right. Um, let's see. The rash may be itchy, but most commonly is red, dry, and accompanied by skin cracking, which let me tell you, hurts like a mother. There are rarely pot hapules, vesiculation or oozing of the skin. It never extends beyond the point of contact with the offending irritant. Irritant contact dermatitis is, I remember the video that I watched for the doctor who was talking about latex allergy, latex uh, surgery, uh, gloves in the OR, uh, he was talking about irritant contact dermatitis. And I was like, why are you using latex in the OR now? It's what? Um, he never replied. Okay. All right. So, uh -huh. um, I'm going to include, there's a latex allergy fact sheet. Um, one second. All right. Uh, we can make a list for dad tonight. Okay. All right. So here's a latex allergy fact sheet written by Dr. Kevin J. Kelly. Natural rural latex is a milky liquid produced by the lactiferous plants or trees. There are over 2,000 lactiferous plants in the world. This includes ficus. This also includes poinsettia. And yeah, well, we're, we're going to stop there. The major source for NRL, natural berlatex, is from the Vea brasiliensis tree and is used to make numerous commercial and medical products. NRL contains a highly cross-linked polymer with a structure of cis 1, 4 polysoprene. Manufacturers that utilize heat vulcanization with sulfur to cross-link the, the polysoprene the vulcanization may perform at a lower temperature and shorter duration by using accelerators and products made by a dipping method, e.g. medical gloves, while using high temperature and prolonged duration used for other types of rubber, e.g. car tires. The unique structure creates a strong elastic barrier that tends to be virtually impermeable to water and that returns to its original shape after multiple stress forces are applied. The poly, poly is, polyisoprene is immunologically inert and not known to cause allergic reactions. Approximately 2% of the weight of NRL is from proteins that are produced of, in the lactifer plant. 13 of these proteins have been well characterized and known to result in IgE-mediated allergic reactions. 
Most of the allergic reactions have been reported to occur from finished rubber products that are made by a dipping method with formulated natural rubber latex. Approximately 12% um, of the NRL harvested is used to make products by this dipping method. Manufactured latex products may contain addictive chemicals that either accelerate the cross linking or antioxidants used in the process. Many of these chemicals have a propensity to cause delayed hypersensitivity reactions manifested as contact dermatitis. Hmm. Theramus, carbamates, and this word. Let's see. Mercapobenzthiazole. Chemicals are the most common rubber additive chemicals to cause contact dermatitis. So is ethylenodiamine hydrochloride. Want to know how I know? Because I'm allergic to it. Want to know also how I know? Because it's used as a stabilizer in natural rubber latex. That's how I know. Okay. Damn. Okay. Barb's in the hospital again. All right. We'll be talking. Okay. Um, allergic contact dermatitis is clinical diagnosis made by a licensed independent health care provider that utilizes a medical history, physical exam, and possibly patched skin testing by the offending agent. I'm going to give you medical advice. I am telling you that I do not allow skin testing for medical, uh, for, for latex, unless it's medically necessary. Like, I have to go into the hospital for a medical procedure that might involve contact with such and such or a new medication that contains X, Y, or Z. So I need to get tested beforehand so that they know how to be prepared in case I react. Um, but if I've reacted twice to something at home and I have pictures to prove it because I document everything and a doctor says, well, you need to bring it in so we can test it because I'm not going to mark it down as you're allergic to it unless you, unless you actually, we, we see it happen in the office. I'm not doing that um, because every single exposure can increase the allergen and you don't know how bad the next one's going to be, period. It's kind of like saying to tell, it's like kind of like telling someone with peanut allergy that they need to eat a peanut in front of you to prove that they're allergic to it. Mm -hmm. In yeah. translation, it's not intelligent. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, here's the thing. The doctor disbelieving the patient doesn't allow the doctor to build the insurance company for the testing. Now, I'm not saying that that's exactly what's going on. I'm just saying it's kind of sus. Okay? All right. Now, um, allergic conduct dermatitis is a clinical diagnosis made. I already said that. Okay. Some individuals who develop IgE-mediated latex allergy also have preceding or, concern, or concurrent contact dermatitis. Yes. Many workers, possibly 30%, who use latex gloves and other gloves may get irritant dermatitis on their hands for the numerous causes, e.g. sweating, powder, frequent hand washing. Yep. The dermatitis may proceed or be concurrent with the development of IgE-mediated latex allergy. A diagnosis of irritant contact dermatitis is a clinical diagnosis made by a licensed independent health care provider that utilizes a medical history and physical exam. IgE-mediated latex allergy to NRL may cause hives, angioedema, rhinitis, conjunctivitis, asthma, and anaphylaxis with or without passing. And um, I'm going to tell you right now, it also causes asthma. Uh, and uh, panic. And um, by the way, uh, this is our rule with our daughter who has asthma and our rule for me because I have panic disorder. If the asthma comes, and she hasn't had this happen, so what we pay attention. Um, if the asthma were to come with stomach upset um, or with hives or with um, angioedema. It's not just asthma. It's an anaphylactic reaction because two or more uh, body system systems at once is an allergic reaction. Same thing with it's my... Anaphylactic. Sorry, anaphylactic, yes. Uh, so thank you, babe. And so anyway, keep in mind, 
two or more two or more symptoms at once. I don't go to the hospital unless it's my airway that's affected. I self-treat at home based on my rescue plan with my doctor. Talk to your doctor about your rescue plan. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Patients with spina bifida, local anom anomalies, multiple surgeries, diabetes, or insulin injections, and atopic subjects appear to be at higher risk for developing latex allergy. Want to know why the people who are on ins insulin injections and uh, for because of the rubber stop, the natural rubber latex use in the stoppers. Um, it's possible to use non rubber latex for vial stoppers. So I don't know why we're still using them. Probably because it's cheaper or something. And because government contracts and all that crap. Patients with spina bifida read that already. Individuals in occupations where latex gloves are worn may develop symptoms of Ig immediate latex allergy more frequently when compared to other occupations where latex is not used. Yeah. The definitive cause of the latex allergy epidemic in spina bifida and healthcare workers in the 90s is not clear. Um, I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but I need to confirm with an allergist. So... Um, cause I, I put all the, I, I put puzzle pieces together, you guys. I just, uh, I'm not, I don't like going on record with anything until I have backup and that's my training as a journalist. So prevalent studies and avoidance strategies suggest that allergen contact of latex gloves, as well as inhaled latex allergen on powder from latex gloves may have contributed strongly to symptoms. Did they not say earlier? Did that, they not just answer did, the did, question? Did they say earlier in the article also that that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Blood donors suggest that up to 8.2% of the general population may have detectable IgE, IgE antibody directed against latex allergen. This does not mean that 8% of the population has latex allergy. Two large cohorts of subjects skin tested to latex in Europe have shown the prevalence of positive skin tests to be approximately 1%. Approximately 50% of latex allergic subjects show laboratory or, clinic or, or clinical symptoms of allergy, frost reactivity to one or more fruit. That we'll get into in a second with the latex fruit syndrome list. Bananas, avocados, kiwi, and stone fruits appear to elicit the most clinical cross reactivity. Okay. Bananas, avocados, kiwi, and stone fruits. Peaches plums, all of that. So pay attention. Approximately 10% of the fruit allergic individuals may have cross reactivity to NRL. A skin testing reagent of natural rubber latex has not been cleared by FDA in the U.S. Right here. There is no skin test cleared by the FDA in the US, okay? So um, when a doctor says, well, I have to see it to believe it, you can say, and I have it highlighted right here. You can print this out and take it with you. There is not a single actual test for skin testing for latex that is cleared by the FDA. So why do you need to, if I have pictures, if I have a witness with me who is willing to talk to you, if I have video and you can watch it all right now, why do you want me to bring a banana or an avocado or a balloon to lick in front of you so that you can watch it happen all over again? Because there's not a single test clear by the FDA. Okay. Uh, and it should be noted that a well-characterized skin test reagent has not resulted in severe untoward reactions. However, the use of non-standardized latex reagents has occasionally resulted in severe allergic reactions in subjects tested. That's important to know. Okay. Okay. Uh, Serologic testing for the presence of anti-latex IgE antibodies has a sensitivity of 75% to 90% depending on the type of assay and substrate antigen. 
the, specific, the specificity of the serologic of the serologic assays, assays, assays. Somebody pronounce that for me. Assays uh, for the presence of anti-latex IgE antibodies has a specificity of 90 to 98% on the type of assay and substrate antigen. Serologic assays may result in false negative responses in 10 to 25% of subjects tested. This is why one of my, I, I tested four times negative for banana allergy, even though I was reacting to it every time I had it and every time it got worse. My allergen at the time, my allergist at the time told me the best, this, what I consider the best advice I ever got. He said, if you react to a food twice, consider yourself allergic. If you react to a medicine once, consider yourself allergic, period. And um, I followed that rule ever since. All right. Um, serologic assays. Okay. Serologic, serologic assays may result in false positive responses in a significant, purport, significant proportion of subjects tested depending on the prevalent of, prevalence of the disease. And the diagnosis of latex allergy is a clinical uh, diagnosis made by a licensed independent healthcare provider that utilizes a medical history, physical exam sometimes, right? And possibly skin testing or serological, and, oh, and possibly uh, skin testing or serologic testing. So there's that. Now we go back to the actual page. go back and I will include that link so you can download it and keep it with you. Now, there are two major categories for natural rubber latex. Dipped. The products are stretchy rubber and usually contain the highest content of latex proteins. This includes gloves, balloons, and condoms. But it does not mean that those are the, those are the only problems or triggers for latex allergy. Understand that. I know people who can't go into grocery stores. I can't leave the house during the holidays because uh, very much because I react to poinsettia plants if I can if I'm close enough to see one and I'm close enough to react. And yes, I'm working on um, putting together a video and information on that one so that I can um, get that one out in the open for people who are wondering where I got my sources from. Number one, it's happened to me multiple times. People have seen it, uh, but I do know that I've seen it. I just forgot to mark the end. I just forgot to mark the uh, page. So I have to find it all over again. And there's a lot of information on the internet. All right. Uh, molded is a second type of natural Brolitex product. These products are dry molded to be hardened rubber products, vial stoppers, syringes, and gaskets. Why are we still using natural rubber latex as vial stoppers? If we know that latex allergy is progressive, and if we know that every exposure can increase or cause the allergy in someone, um, then either we stop using the latex vial stoppers, because guess what? Zolaire, the one that everyone's talking about right now, oh, 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 I can't even say the whole word, Aminulizumab lab, the one that sounds like a Pokemon, Pokemon name, um, Zolaire, that people from, from MCAS use for uh, mast cell stabilization, which is amazing for a lot of people. There's latex in the tip and the one that, um, the, the regular one, and both versions contain polysorbate. 80, I believe, which is a coconut derivative. I can't use either. Oh, and by the way, um, I still have to confirm this one, but um, I had a commenter uh, tell me that they had a severe anaphylactic reaction to Zolaire uh, because um, they have alpha gal. And um, apparently, um, Zoller is made with hamster ovaries, which shares proteins with beef. <laughs> Best version of imagining someone licking a balloon. So now I'm wondering how many people um, 
Yeah, but anyway, Zola and hamsters. But okay, so moving on. Um, synthetic rubber products do not contain natural rubber latex, but may contain rubber accelerators that are used in manufacturing. Like people like me sometimes have a problem with. Um, because if you're allergic to or sensitive to accelerators, you may have a synthetic rubber latex reaction. I do too. Guess what? That's exactly what happened with the Phenergen because that contains ethylene and diamine dichloride. What are the symptoms of latex allergy? I'm going to have to do a whole separate one on just making this shorter. I'll break it up. All right. Let's see. Symptoms include for type one, skin irritation to respiratory symptoms to life threatening anaphylaxis. And there's no way to predict which will occur if exposed. Symptoms of latex allergy may be mild at first, regressing to more serious types of, of symptoms. Yes. Symptoms of latex allergy include skin redness, urticaria, hives, itching, nasal drainage, itchy eyes, sneezing, throat irritation, asthma. Um, and um, <clears throat> from personal experience, uh, I also experienced dry mouth and um, tachycardia, panic, impending doom. And my skin gets hard. I don't know how to explain that. A latex, like an instant callus. A latex allergy reaction can also, can also result in anaphylaxis or anaphylactic shock by threatening allergic reaction. Symptoms can start within seconds of exposure to latex or may not appear until hours later. The allergic reaction can be different each time a person experiences anaphylaxis and can vary in severity each time. Ask anybody with MCAS. Sometimes I have up to four reactions a day, sometimes more. Great times. Yeah, they're not always the same. Uh, but usually um, I, I, know, I know the typical domino um, sequence. Um, and I know the difference between, oh, and by the way, um, an actual allergic reaction can actually trigger an MCAS flare. So just so you know. Um, this makes identifying anaphylaxis and responding to care tricky at times. All right. A board-certified healthcare professional, often an allergist, makes a diagnosis of a latex allergy, as well as contact dermatitis and or irritant dermatitis. The healthcare professional uses a combination of medical history, physical exam, and various laboratory and clinical testing. Laboratory testing alone is not enough to make a diagnosis. Patients are encouraged to provide a full list of items and foods that may have caused a latex allergic reaction to help determine other latex allergy is present. I highly suggest keeping, if you have or suspect latex allergy and it's not diagnosed, um, photo album where you keep track of all of your you, all, all of your symptoms, um, visible symptoms, um, maybe even a written note um, that you can take in from witnesses, family, friends. Hi, Talmash, from family, friends who. Um, have witnessed reactions that you want added to your file. Period, and you want to and you want to know what's added to your file. Okay, um, and uh, there are uh, various uh, allergy at tracking apps that you can add to your smartphone, so that you can say, okay, when this happened, I ate this, and and then this happened. I ate this, and then that happened. You can maybe start to put things together. Okay. How was latex allergy diagnosed? Allergy to latex may be challenging, challenging to diagnose and treat. If you suspect you have a latex allergy, consult an allergist. Be prepared with as much as possible, as much medical history as possible, including where you were and what latex products you were exposed to when you experienced a reaction. Note: I know people diagnosed with latex allergy based off of a singular reaction to a Band-Aid or a singular reaction to a condom, okay? Um, seriously, they went to the doctor and said, this happened, and the doctor said, here's your EpiPen, you're allergic now. So um, it depends on the doctor. 
the diagnosis of latex allergy, contact dermatitis, and or irritant dermatitis is made by an allergist after completing these three parts of an evaluation, medical history, physical exam, and various laboratory and clinical tests. Laboratory testing alone is not enough to make the diagnosis. There's a blood test available, but the results are not 100% accurate, but it's also safer than the skin testing. Latex-specific IgE antibodies can be identified through skin testing or by blood test. Patients should be aware that skin testing for latex allergy has a small risk of adverse reactions. And by adverse, I mean potential, even all the way up to potential anaphylactic shock. There is no FDA-approved skin test reagent for the latex allergy in the United States. Stated twice. I did not add that. Contact dermatitis is confirmed by the use of patch testing. Irritant, irritant dermatitis is diagnosed by the patient's medical history and a physical examination. How do you prevent a latex allergy reaction? Treatment for a latex allergy involves avoidance of the source of the latex that causes the reaction. This is very specific because not every single person with a latex allergy is allergic to the exact same, thing, exact same things or triggered by the exact same things. Um, and sometimes we have to pay attention if we know our allergy is progressive because sometimes things catch us by surprise. For example, I it's not listed anywhere. Um, gourds, the, fam the gourd family, pumpkins, are a potential latex cross, okay? Uh, I didn't learn that, uh, and, and then I had major reactions to a, pa a paleo brownie mix that only has like five ingredients in it, one of them being monk fruit. Monk fruit is not listed as a specific latex cross reactant. However, monk fruit is a member of the gourd family. Let's put the two and two together, shall we? I know I can't have monk fruit. <clears throat> um, but it's still not officially listed as an actual latex allergen, according to scientific paperwork. All right. In the case of IgE-mediated allergy, personal contact with a product should be stopped and change of environment may be necessary. <laughs> And change of environment may be necessary if there is airborne exposure causing asthma or occupational asthma. My allergist in Tucson told us we had to move because um, every time there was a forest fire, it was actual mesquite that was burning. And he told me that one tree 100 miles away is enough to cause anaphylaxis in a person with latex allergy because mesquite is a member of the lagoon family and lagoons are a latex cross. So I've been um, airborne allergic to latex longer than I realized. A lot longer than I realized. Well, I was to sleep normally. Yeah, he, he, and Eliana couldn't touch it. Um, this is the most prominent in settings that use cornstarch powdered latex gloves. Cornstarch powder serves as a carrier for allergenic proteins from latex. It may become airborne when the product is used. These protein particles can become easily airborne, and people with latex allergy may experience the reaction if the powder is inhaled or comes in contact with the mucous membranes of the eyes, nose, or skin. Somebody remind me about this portion right here, because yeah, I have to stay from California. I can't go back to Texas. I can't. I can't go back to Tucson. Um, <laughs> it's my father's from Mexico. My mother's from Mexico. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, my mother's family's from Mexico. My uh, father's from nor northern Mexico. There's mesquite everywhere. I'm technically, essentially, I'm allergic to being Mexican. Um, I can't have avocados. I can't have bananas. I can't have um, coconut. I can't have pina coladas. I can't have shrimp cocktails, Mexican shrimp cocktails. I can't have guacamole. I can't have, um, I'm, I'm allergic to being Mexican. Yeah, I know. It sucks. Okay. Anyway, um, so um, hmm. the most common, uh, so gloves, cornstarch, and um, I'm going to follow up on this one because I believe there is another um, carrier. 
for latex to attach itself to, that has not been covered by scientists. And I believe it's why I react to a certain plant that PubMed says is not airborne because it doesn't because it's not it doesn't contain cornstarch on it. So we'll talk about that in a separate video on a different day after I get my ducks in a row and research um, lined up. Some latex products are more allergenic than others. Latex products most likely to cause a reaction are those made by dipping methods such as gloves, condoms, and balloons. However, molded vulcanized rubber products, tires, for example, may maintain latex allergen proteins. Now, as you saw here, there's a download for latex screening questionnaire. I will include for the, for the, um, to try and keep things shorter, I will include the download screen, uh, uh, the, the download link in the description box and you can take the screening test yourself by clicking the link in the description box, okay? How do you treat a latex allergy? <laughs> well, latex allergy treatment depends on the type of the reaction that is present, a mild sensitivity or a life-threatening allergic reaction or anaphylaxis. Uh, anaphylaxis, epinephrine, a medication given by injection that works quickly to raise blood pressure and reduce swelling in the body is the first line treatment for severe allergic reactions. Talk to your allergist. I am not discounting what they're saying here. I am saying that if you have multiple react, multiple conditions like I do, MCAS and latex allergy, um, my rescue plan looks different than what is listed here because, um, if I'm reacting four to five times a day, I can't epi four to five times a day. Okay. Um, so I have to follow a separate rescue plan unless I know like my target viral video that was straight up latex. Yeah, I have to epi. Um, so I've, I've learned the difference. I'm working on learning the difference anyway. Um, for most people who are only allergic to latex, um, that or or one thing in particular, yes, Epi is first line. Okay, um, and it is available in an easy to use Epi auto injector or pre filled syringe with a retractable needle. Epi should be administered without delay when symptoms appear. Mild sensitivity, if a mild sensitivity is present and there's only a local reaction, the skin is itchy and red at the site, the site where the latex was touched, your doctor may suggest using an antihistamine or using 1% hydrocortisone cream. Yes. Except for me, because I'm allergic to hydrocortisone, because it also contains ethyl and a dimine hydrochloride. Okay. Mm, yeah. Okay. Uh, note, treatment mentions here are for informational purposes only. If you have a latex allergy and require treatment, you should be seen by a board-certified allergist to determine the best treatment for you. I would highly suggest joining local Facebook groups for allergens, latex allergy, and looking for uh, recommendations for doctors who are within driving distance, who accept your insurance and who are latex allergy aware. Uh, that's, um, I was diagnosed by the doctors at the Henry Ford Medical System in, in Detroit when Eliana was 10 months old. Um, so that was, that was a pretty big deal. Is latex allergy preventable? This is huge, okay? Latex allergy is preventable. It is preventable but it's not curable. Awareness and education are the keys to managing the condition. The only way for people with latex allergy to prevent symptoms is strict avoidance of latex. Allergy and asthma network supporters, supports policies where latex gloves are prohibited from use in healthcare and dental activity and dental facilities, schools, food establishments, and emergency responders. Many facilities have responders responded by switching to latex safe gloves, medical products, and supplies. Keep in mind, sports equipment may still be an issue. Um, there is a very cool graphic here 
one to six of the one percent, one to six percent of the population may have life threatening allergy to latex. Fifty percent of the those allergic to latex have frost reactive food allergy. Um, most common natural raw latex cross foods are bananas, avocado, kiwi. Less common are potato, white potato, tomato, bell peppers, chestnut, poinsettia, figs. Dipped versus molded. Latex allergic reactions are most often triggered by dipped latex products. Molded latex products are less likely to cause reactions. Products that commonly cause reactions. Elastic, condoms, dental dams, latex gloves, bandage adhesive, red rubber catheter, balloons, hoosh balls. Hi, 1990s. Rubber bands, therapy bands, the kind of using physical therapy mm, and at the gyms. Yeah. Rubber accelerators and vial stoppers. Vial stoppers. Vial stoppers always ask. Latex products can become airborne. Inhalation of airborne latex particles can occur when latex proteins combine with the powder from products from corn. Aerialized product from aerialized particles that become airborne. These particles get into eyes, nose, mouth, or lungs, where protein may be absorbed through these moist mucous membranes. Latex proteins can be transferred to other materials. Case reports suggest that transfer proteins from powdered gloves to other materials or food can cause allergic reactions. And that's why it matters if the kitchen staff at the restaurant you're eating is wearing latex safe gloves or not. Okay. Latex can be natural or synthetic. The rubber component of latex is cis 1.4 poly, polyisoprene. Only natural rubber latex is proteins that can cause allergic reactions unless the sun manufacturer uses a product ID casein from milk and then manufacturer fracture or curing of the polyisoprene. Casein. Okay. Things are making sense. I've never been able to handle any sausage rep. Sausage. I, that explains a lot. Okay. All right. Anyway, how can I find out if I have a latex allergy? The diagnosis of latex allergy, contact dermatitis, and or irritant, irritant contact, irritant dermatitis is made by a licensed independent medical professional who uses medical history. Laboratory testing alone is, is, is insignificant to make a diagnosis. Which items contain latex? Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 people. All right. There are more than 40,000 products worldwide that contain latex. Very difficult for people with latex allergy to perform everyday tasks and live a full active lifestyle. In fact, latex allergy can is recognized as an ADA by um, recognized disability, but not everybody with latex allergy is going to be considered disabled. It depends on how badly you are affected. Um, so let's get down. Latex allergy develops after repeat exposure and consumer products containing natural rubber latex. This is why I'm always talking to all about your shoes. If you're latex allergic, don't, I can't give, I can't, cannot give medical advice, but um, I really wish I had switched over to latex free shoes uh, before um, I had no choice. Okay. The difficulty in managing latex allergy is that latex and latex proteins are, are found in so many common everyday products. For example, your daily meal may be wrapped in a rubber band, or the fruit, or the pro or the vegetables in your in your in, in your grocery store. That's why you usually buy frozen. Seriously, uh, or they're going to be um, sprayed with a wax to make them shiny, like the rush stuff, and that usually contains coconut. Just so you know. I was told that by somebody who has a coconut allergy who works in a grocery store. For example, your Daily Mail, got that one? Okay, all right. Uh, there may be a celebration that includes latex balloons. Yeah, 
I don't go. Sorry. I'll send a big fat check and an apology, but I can't go. Um, or the allergic waistband or the elastic waistband on underwear may cause a sudden and unexpected allergic emergency. Additional products with latex include balloons, rubber or latex exam, exam gloves, condoms, elastic bands, physical bands, rubber bands, dental dams, stethoscopes, and blood pressure cuffs, spandex, specifier, pass, pacifiers, and baby bottle nipples, mouse pads, goggles, bath mats, certain mattresses. Okay. Is there a list of latex-free items? Yes. They have compiled a list of latex-free sports equipment and latex-free school products list. Those will be separate videos. I will include the links in the description box. If you're unsure whether a product contains natural or latex, you can use a sample letter to contact the manufacturer and find out if it contain, contains latex. But always, always contact the manufacturer again before repurchasing the product if it was safe the first time because there's always the possibility that the formulation changed or that they're now using shared lines, cross-contamination, etc. What foods are related to latex? This is where we get to the good stuff, people. People with latex allergy may also develop latex allergic reactions to some fruits and vegetables. About half of the people with a latex allergy may develop latex, latex allergy fruit syndrome from avocado, banana, or kiwi. This happens due to cross-reactivity. Some of the proteins and natural latex are similar to those found in cross-reactor fruits and vegetables. At the same time, people with food allergies to certain fruits and vegetables may have allergic reactions to latex. This may occur in approximately 10% of the food allergic uh, uh, individuals. Here is the allergy and asthma um, food list high latex proteins avocado banana chestnut kiwi moderate apple carrot celery melon papaya potato tomato low or undetermined apricot buckwheat castor beans cayenne pepper cherry chickpeas citrus fruit sit coconut dill fig Grapes, hazelnut, lychee or lychee, mango, nectarine, oregano, peach, peanut, pear, persimmon, pineapple, plum, rye, sage, shellfish, soybean, strawberry, sunflower seed, sweet pepper, walnut, wheat, wheat, and zucchini. I have a friend who was told to go gluten-free the second she was diagnosed as allergic to latex. Okay. What to do if you have a latex allergy? Wear medical identification at all times. Carry with you. Medications prescribed by your allergist, including anaphylaxis medications, two EpiPens at least, uh, antihistamines, asthma medications, inhaler, albuterol, if you can take it. I can't. Uh, Non-latex gloves. Latex Allergy Action Plan developed with your allergist. I will include that link in the description box also. And notify the following of your latex allergy and other pertinent information, your medical and dental providers, uh, family members, friends, employers, and coworkers, EMS if calling 911. Avoid natural or latex products such as Gloves, balloons, condoms, and other natural NLR products. Be aware of and consult with your allergist regarding proper use of medications, hidden latex in food prepared with latex gloves, lactiferous plants that may have cross-reactive proteins, foods with cross-reactive proteins to natural rubber, which like include banana, avocado, kiwi, chestnut, and carry a list of medications prescribed by your allergist. I will also include a list to the latex allergy patient list. That could be a, a different video. Uh, can you eat at a restaurant with latex allergy? Yeah, you can, but you have to be careful. Um, you need to make sure the kitchen staff is using latex-safe gloves. Uh, make sure that um, they're not contaminating your food with uh, the other 
potential latex cross derivatives in the kitchen. And um, you actually have to call ahead to see if there are any birthday parties um, or if they have, uh, because like they latex balloons, latex balloons. Yeah. Um, what can you do to navigate research restaurants with a latex allergy? Um, well, first call. Okay. Uh, then you can talk to the hostess or the manager, talk to the kitchen staff. Um, and if they give you any problems at all, quite honestly, it's just not worth the trouble. Okay. Check out websites and menus of any restaurants you plan to visit. Many restaurants may have already adopted a non-latex policy. This includes Burger King, Quiznos, Denny's, Red Lobster, Outback, Steakhouse, Red Robins, Arby's, Subway, Bahama Breeze, Domino's Pizza, and Cracker Barrel. Um, I had a reaction at a Red Robins because um, they still have their balloons up, by the way, with just, just so you know, this happened within the last um, six months. Um, uh, and uh, apparently Disney World and Disneyland also have adopted a non-latex policy. Higher risk situations are established with buffets, risk of cross-contaminants, made foods enable for the chef to eliminate an ingredient and eateries that frequently use banana, kiwi, or avocado. So like Jamba Juice, yeah, 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 that, that would be poison for me. Uh, if you go to a Starbucks and you ask for a drink and you tell them you have coconut allergy, which again, related to, co to, to, to latex as a cross reactant, they're going to tell you that they cannot make a drink for you unless it's the drink, unless it's um, a, a, just an iced drink, not blended, doesn't go in a blender that they hand to you because um, the blenders are contaminated with coconut because you can't wash that out. Um, so basically, you're going to have to be that customer at the restaurant who is asking all the questions all the time um, and find out... Um, if it's a safe for you, place for you to eat. Um, you can also bring a chef, chef card with the details of your allergy that the server can hand to the chef. And by submitting this card, you don't have to rely solely on verbal communication passing from server to chef. Latex allergic individuals should carry two EpiPen auto injectors. I have a friend who carries four. Wear medical identification and pack a copy of a letter from an allergist detailing the diagnosis and what to do in case of an emergency. There's your rescue plan, people. We are almost done. Okay. What's important to know about latex allergy and vaccines? Some vaccines packaging does contain latex, uh, but not all does. That's that's the basic. Basically, I'm going to scroll through this one super fast saying um, current, current strategies include popping the top, preventing the puncturing of the latex stopper for safer administration. However, there's still a possibility that the latex allergic proteins can, can contaminate the medicine, medicine during the period of storage. I don't see how it couldn't. Uh, the one stick rule is based on the assumption that a single stick through the vial minimizes the latex allergen distribution into the medication, but there's still, you still stuck it. Um, and uh, post-vaccination observation by the qualified, qualified individual for person uh, for a period of at least 15 minutes of up to two hours. Can poinsettia plants cause latex allergy reaction? The poinsettia, poinsettia plant used for holiday decorating is botanically related to natural latex. When the leaves or stems are broken, it releases a white milky substance that can cause reactions in latex allergic individuals. I react to that. Um, and here's, there are any more information here. You can click on latex allergy items in the online store, latex allergy news, latex allergy vaccines, latex allergy posters and infographics, and sign up for their newsletter. And there you go. I will make sure that I, I'm going to probably break this up in shorts and do a whole lot more on the videos. Um, but, uh. This is a lot of info, but the, this is the page that I use the most to, um, uh, this is the page that I use the most right here for my 
reference. So stop sharing. All right. So anybody who comes across this, if you have latex allergy, I would appreciate if you left a comment, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, latex allergy awareness saves lives and um, can also help prevent the um, severity of the allergy from spreading or increasing. Um, that would have been wonderful to know 16 years ago because maybe I wouldn't have lost so many foods so quickly. Um, and uh, everybody needs to know about latex allergy, not just the people who are allergic. Uh, please, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And I will be happy to uh, come on back and, and answer for you. And don't worry, I will be going through this video and seeing if I can figure out a way to either break up into pieces. If I can't, then I will just redo shorts for each section because I know that sometimes it's the small bits of information that's easier for us to uh, take in all at one time. However, here it is all in one bit. Um, the link to the Allergy Asthma Network will be in the description box. I will include other information in the description box, including the links that I spoke about. And uh, again, thank you for watching. Um, Pauline from Conically Spicy. Stay safe, stay aware. Food and latex allergy awareness saves lives. And that means everybody, not just a person with the EpiPen. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.